Hello everyone, welcome back to the Jewel Exploration Base, also known as the Jeb Program. This is the finale episode of the four-part series in which I launch a orbitally assembled vehicle to Jeb to ex not to Jeb, to Jewel to explore the Jewel system and its five epic moons. Right now the habitation module is being launched. I planned on making this a separate video, but I didn't have enough content to make one big video. So I, wait, I do have enough content to make this big video, but I didn't, I didn't feel like, I like to make content that I like and would appreciate like watching as a viewer. And I felt that if I made a standalone habitation module video, it wouldn't be up to my standards, which is why I've included in kind of the beginning of this video. It also allows me to do commentary on the at least one of the orbitally launched parts. There you can see I'm planning a intersection with the existing pieces of the ship. I it took a lot of attempts to get all every single module took more than one attempt to get like well except for the first one because you just have to put that in orbit. But every single one that I had to attach to the Jeb ship took me more than one attempt and I feel like this is the best possible job I did. It's probably still not great by like many standards, but I feel it was the best job I did with any docking. If you go back and watch some of my other Jeb videos, you'll see that the docking is very sporadic and honestly terrible, but this, I feel like I did a lot better job with this module. There you can see Valentina Kerman piloting the habitation module towards the Jeb ship. I'm actually really proud of how this ship turned out. I think it's really like, I don't know, I think it looks cool. And that's really all that matters in Sandbox Kerbal Space Program, because you don't need funding or science or to really do anything. You could just sit there and do nothing, but then what's the point? So I feel like doing big cool projects like this that take too much work is probably the best use of time and sandbox Kerbal. So now you can see that I have used the Lown Lazy method of docking, where you tell both of the docking ports to point directly at each other and then just thrust towards one of the docking ports. However, um, there actually were no complications. The RCS worked great. I included enough, way too much monopropellant actually. I'm not sure if you can see in the top corner, but I have like 400 monopropellant and I only used like 40. So it actually worked out pretty great and I'm really happy with how the ship turned out. But now the ship can begin its journey to Jewel because all the modules have been fully integrated into the ship and it's ready for its interplanetary voyage. I didn't line this up with the editing great, because we still have an epic cinematic shot to see. And setting up an action group for that cinematic shot. So there you can see one of the epic cinematic shots where the solar panels are extending on that front module. And you might be able to notice this, but there's two massive radiators there, kind of in front of the crew module, but behind the frontal cupola. And those, I just forgot about them. I'm not sure at which point I realized those were even on the ship, but they are, and I forgot about them. So, oh the, yeah, there's the big cinematic shot where I lined up everything to deploy and extend at the exact same time. So it kind of just looks like a kind of a dead husk of a ship. And then when you press the command key, it activates the action group and then everything comes to life. I really like it. And there you can see I had, I actually did a crossfade there and because it took me like three attempts to get a good jewel encounter, it, this ship wasn't planned the best. I lined up the fuel module to put about a hundred tons to jewel. That wasn't factoring in a Tylo gravity assist or a lathe gravity assist. And I also didn't really measure the weight of any of the modules, and I didn't take into account any of the fuel of the modules. And as you can see in the footage, the delta V counter wasn't working correctly. So I was honestly just guessing that I had enough fuel to get to Jewel. Spoiler alert, in the end I did, 
but there were other components of the mission that didn't go to plan. There you can see I am setting up a camera tool setting to get a really cool flyby shot of the space station drifting through space with its engines at maximum power. And I actually had to split this ejection burn over two orbits because I'm lazy and it would have taken too long to do it in one. You can also see in that epic cinematic shot there's the moon. And um, this shot's really long. I can't... Oh, there we go. I couldn't figure out what to say, but now I can because we're on our way to Jewel. And you can see with the encounter I plotted, there is a Jewel encounter. However, that it's not very good. I have to make a normal correction burn. And then also some prograde and retrograde. I'm not sure which. Probably one of those because you need those. But... My plan was to set up a gravity assist off of either Tylo or Lathe. People, I think, usually prefer Tylo gravity assist because it doesn't have an atmosphere, so you can go really close to Tylo's surface as long as you're above the mountains. And it's also more massive, so the gravity assists do better. However, I've always preferred Lathe assist because Lathe's lower orbital period makes it a lot easier to get an encounter, and I'm still not very good at um, gravity assists. So here you can see that normal burn I was talking about to get into a good encounter with Jewel instead of just one where I fly by roughly near the planet. And then you can also, yeah, there's just more shots of Jewel and trying to plan everything. And you can see there, it was so much easier to, like, I just find it easier to get assists off of Lathe. Which is why, and I know that the atmosphere is there, so it's hard to get close, so they're not as effective in mass and because of the atmosphere. But I just find them easier. And then there's another small correction burn to get from just kind of a level intercepted with Jewel to the actual gravity assist that will put me in an orbit. And there you can see a very long shot. This is, I think, sped up like 500 times, and I was on maximum time warp. And you can see all of the moons of Jewel back there orbiting around Jewel. And yeah, the transfers to Jewel, even on maximum time warp, still take a while. And then there's another flyby shot of the epic space station. There you can see I'm planning my Lathan encounter. I also decided it would be cool to get some views of the crew, see how they're doing on this multi-year long mission. I believe that was actually Jeb there in that MK1 cockpit you can see right now. And then there's another epic shot I got. I think the SAS wasn't doing good, either that or I was pointing to a new maneuver. But I didn't have any maneuver set up, so I guess that ship train will always be a mystery. And then this beautiful shot of Jewel and Lathe and the other moons. On the left you can even see some of the other planets in the background. I just think that's a beautiful shot with their silhouettes in the sun. And then we can time warp ahead to our next destination. I had to try and set up this ship to get to pull because I was running pretty low on liquid fuel, as you can see with the top fuel indicator. And I also have some ore ships that go and get ore. So if I go to pull, then the low delta V on these ships, but their decent thrust to weight ratio on pull with the terrier engines, should be enough to go and get some ore and then bring it back to the ship for processing. That way I can continue to infinitely explore the jewel system, do flybys of all the moons, and then always be able to travel between planets as long as I make regular stops to pull and or bot for fuel. There's another time warp cinematic shot in which you can see some of the moons and pull coming into view, and then I have to do this really large retro burn to capture at pole because my the way I set up that orbit I didn't set it up very good so I was crossing the path of pole instead of meeting the path of pole which means I'm going to have a much higher relative velocity than I would normally have which leads to a higher injection burn so then you can see I'm setting up camera tools again to get another um, epic shot as our ship descends towards pole and there you can see I had to do a radial burn because if you burn retrograde before the periapsis too much, it will actually lower the periapsis, which means you have to do a radial outburn to make sure you don't hit the planet and or moon. 
and there you can see I'm finishing the retro burn to get captured into a pole orbit. And then the next orbit around, I have to do another retro burn to get captured into a low pole orbit. Another great cinematic shot as we fly around pole with this epic Jeb ship thing. I don't even know what really to call it. It's not a space station. And it's not really a ship either. I guess it's a space station ship. And then there's an yet another shot of it orbiting around pole. I think it's really cool how like the camera can stay focused on pole but the ship orbits because it's not changing relative to the surface of the planet. And there you can see I'm preparing one of the mining ships to go down and pick up some ore. And there we can see I used um, the monopropellant on board to kind of turn it around so that it could burn retrograde to land on pole. And there it goes! Bye bye Jeb! <laughs> well, not really bye bye Jeb because Jebediah Kerman is on board this lander. So there it is, just kind of descending towards pole. I have those landing gear on the bottom. Probably should have went for a more stable design because the landing legs, um, the, the ship isn't very stable when it's landed because it has a high center of mass. But luckily, I was able to pick out a relatively flat spot on pole. There aren't many, but you can find some. And then, I deployed the mining drill and realized that I forgot radiators. So it would never realistically function as a fuel ship. So, in sadness, I prepared to go back to the Jeb ship with the mission failed. However, it wasn't a total failure. Well, it kind of was because Jeb's out of fuel now. The Jeb space station ship doesn't really have much liquid fuel. It can still go around the system, but not very efficiently. And then it's also really hard to dock these ships. If I ever do another mission like this, I will do a much better job designing the ore ships because these things are kind of a pain to dock. They're a lot harder. You can't really use the Matlown lazy method because I don't know, maybe I just didn't, maybe I didn't even try that docking method. But regardless if it worked or not, I did it the hard way so I don't like it. And there you can see orbiting around pole some more. And then one last beautiful vista of jewel with, you, you can see Tylo and Lathe, I believe, and then also Jewel, and then Pull is below us, and there we go! I finally remembered those radiators. So now, we can get an epic shot with the lights on, orbiting above Pull for the thumbnail. See you guys in the next video! Don't forget to subscribe!